Now I watched a video once where the creator of the video tried selling to the audience that having one of these, these power stations or solar generators was equivalent to having unlimited power. And of course I clicked on it and when I did, I felt duped, I felt lied to. So unlimited power, no. Now while unlimited power is out of the question for us mere mortals for the time being, and that's because these batteries aren't gonna last forever, right? There's a little trick that can help you maximize the power that you do have, and that is called daisy chaining. Now in this example, I have two main units that I use, and I do reviews on others, so I have a third here but I've got my main unit for backup power for when the power goes out, which is every single year, multiple times for me where I'm at. And I've got a smaller portable unit. And this little guy is gonna allow me to go camping and just be more portable. And by the off chance that you have more than two units laying around the house, this might be useful. I'm gonna throw in a third unit. This one's from Ops. It does not matter at all what models, variations they are. It's going to work in this daisy chain setup. This is also gonna show you with a third unit, a little bit more of the flexibility of the system, a couple of the charging options and so on. And here's what it boils down to. You can combine two or more of these individual units, these individual power station solar generators into a larger combined system. This would allow you to tap into all of the power that each of these have to offer you can still use all the outlets if you'd like even, but you don't have to charge them and fumble with all the cords to individually charge each unit. In this example, I'll be using my EcoFlow Delta Max and combining it with my more portable EcoFlow River. And to add to the mix, I'm gonna throw in the Ops 1800 watt hour unit. Now on their own, this Delta Max is gonna hold 2000 watt hours. This EcoFlow River is going to hold about 260 watt hours. And I have the Ops 1800, which go figure 1800 watt hours. Now starting with the largest unit first, which is the Max, I am going to plug in the Ops charging AC adapter. Plug it into the back here, turn that on. Plug the input into the second power station. And you're gonna see that this unit is already gonna start leaching power from the first unit in the daisy chain. So I would be able to, with this setup alone, plug this 200 watt heater in and use this as a daisy chain system. This is pulling power from the OPS, which is pulling power from the EcoFlow Delta Max. I have a daisy chain. 200 watts is getting pulled from this unit. It's gonna take a lot longer to drain this daisy chain system than it would be to drain the 1800 watt on its own. So I've essentially given this little guy a lot more juice to pull from. As you can see, the max is outputting around 210 watts, while the OPS is inputting about 180 and you're gonna to need to take into account some of the power loss due to the inefficiency of the inverter. Now let's say I wanted to use the DC, which is gonna be more efficient than the AC. So by plugging this into like a wall outlet, you're using AC. I wanna use this little car outlet adapter. It's gonna be a heck of a lot more efficient. You're not gonna have that power loss that you would see from plugging the AC in. So let's unplug this heater. I'm gonna to add to the daisy chain that we already have here. I'm gonna take my 260 watt hour river unit and I'm gonna plug the heater into this guy. Now with the car outlet adapter, the output from the OPS is going to go into the input on this river here and the connector's right in the back. Now essentially by hooking up and powering this heater, the heater is pulling power from the river, which is pulling power from the OPS, which is pulling power from the Delta Max. With this system here, it is in combination over 4,000 watt hours. So you can get the same from getting an extra smart battery for the EcoFlow, putting that on top and hooking it together. Or if you have a couple of power stations laying around, you can get some pretty significant watt hour capacity. And that's gonna ultimately extend what devices you can use and how long you can use them for. So I know not everybody's gonna have a ton of these things laying around, they're not cheap, but if you have more than one, you're gonna be able to do something like this. Now to charge these units together combined, I'm gonna take the AC adapter for this guy. I'm not gonna need to charge these individually. I'm gonna plug this one in, which is gonna supply power down the chain all the way to the end, which is the river. The river is going to fill top off, 
then this will top off, and then the beginning of the daisy chain will ultimately be entirely full. So let's plug in the max. You're gonna see the input on the max go up, and it's as simple as that. You're charging the entire daisy chain setup now. You can do this with solar, you can do it with AC. You're gonna be able to charge this up as you are pulling power from these individual units. So I could plug three heaters in, one into here, one into here, one into here, and it would still work. You don't lose the ability to use the other units, but if you want to tap into the full capacity, in this case, over 4,000 watt hours, you're gonna wanna use the final unit in the daisy chain. Now, another pro to this setup, you're not going to be limited to charging only the first unit here. If you have a power cord, which hopefully you should, have for each of these units, you can charge these all individually. You don't have to just use this first unit. It's very simple by doing this and letting the daisy chain charging take care of itself, but you don't have to. So I could have solar coming into this unit and AC power going into this unit. You're gonna be able to charge these with their own inputs. Now the downside to this setup is there's not gonna be balanced charging. So if by using the smart battery, I did a review on this a few weeks ago, you would be able to have balanced charging by using the EcoFlow smart battery and the adapter that comes with it. And that would charge the smart battery and the main unit itself together. Another thing to keep in mind, it's not necessarily a con, is these power stations all have different abilities and capabilities. So this little 260 watt hour unit is obviously going to be a lot smaller in size than the 2000, but this 2000 has a much larger inverter on this max here. So I'm going to be able to power much bigger appliances with this than I am with this. So you may need to plug in your fridge, for example, power outage, my main crux in this place. I would be able to plug that refrigerator into the max while using the smaller space heater on the river. So again, it's not really a con, it's just things to keep in mind. And this kind of setup is not just limited to power stations that you buy from a company like EcoFlow or OPS. You don't have to do this with just power stations. You can use your own battery banks that you have set up on your own solar inverter. This is just meant to get the juices flowing. You're not limited to the individual devices that you might have laying around. And if you are interested in getting more details about the units that you see here today, I have a review on both of these EcoFlows. I'll plug those into the description. I haven't done one on the OPS yet, so that's probably a month or two down the road. All right, folks, so until the next video, please stay practical, stay warm, it's still freezing outside, and I'll catch you on the next one.